Welcome to Journeys with the No Schedule Man, exploring authentic stories of personal growth and lessons learned from people living true to themselves with creativity, passion, and purpose. For all past episodes, subscribe on iTunes or visit NoScheduleman.com. And please, connect, share, and contribute with a comment, rating, or review. And now, here's your host, the No Schedule Man, Kevin Ballmer. I've been known to struggle with reality. It's not that it is any real mystery. I just don't have the Broadcasting from London, Ontario, Canada. Welcome. I'm Kevin Ballmer. This is Journeys with the No Schedule Man. We are here to celebrate and share the journey of heart-centered entrepreneurs who have challenged themselves to act on their inspiration so they can expand and grow. And together we explore their triumphs, challenges, thoughts, feelings, and lessons learned. And today we're going to talk about living life colorfully with my friend, Angela Dacey. Angela is somebody that I met in my travels as a speaker. We originally met in a town called Aurora, Ontario, which is in the area if you think about Toronto and then you look up in the sort of the new market in Richmond Hill area. It's up near there, and I uh, immediately felt a real connection with Angela, and I'm excited to talk about her adventures, her journey today, and why color means so much, uh, what that's done for her, both in her personal life and in her career, what it's meant for her business, and uh, how she's navigating through things and some maybe even potential changes coming up now as we embark upon this conversation. We will chat about all that and more in just a couple of moments. A reminder that you can find all episodes of this podcast uh, on audio at Apple Podcasts or iTunes, if you like, iTunes, that is, uh, Stitcher, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio, we're working on getting it up on Spotify now as well. Uh, all of the episodes that were originally just audio are still all available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash no schedule man. But as of about episode 84, we started doing video along with the audio, and you can find those episodes uh, both on the YouTube channel and on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash no schedule man. If you visit us on my website, no schedule man.com, please take a moment and sign up for our free email updates. We call it Letters from the Little Engine, delivering inspirational email into your email inbox every couple of weeks. And then if there's uh, something else going on that we think that you should know about or would want to know about, like new episodes of the podcast, for instance, interest for <laughs> for instance. <laughs> Good thing I'm the host, huh? Because I'm so tongue-tied. Uh, we will let you know about that. You can go directly to it at noschedulemancom slash email. Thanks to those who have made it possible for us to deliver this podcast, including our friend Laura Ma at Diamond and Gold Treasures. Thanks to Mo Mondays London, which is kind of like TEDx meets The Tonight Show once a month here in London, Ontario, Canada at the London Music Club. Hopefully we'll be able to get back to that soon. Right now we're kind of waiting in their wings as everybody else is with the coronavirus situation around the world. Thanks to Mulligan Realty Group, the kind of realtor you deserve. You can contact Ryan and his team at mulliganrealtygroup.com. Brett and his team at Provincial Glass and Mirror Limited have been real busy during this coronavirus shutdown. They have been installing glass partitions to help keep people safe with those uh, who are still up and running as an essential service. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of businesses have had to board up their, their windows, their storefronts as well to, to combat vandalism. That's an unfortunate thing that's had to be done, but at least uh, we know we've got good help with people like that. Brett and his team have been helping out with some of that stuff as well. Hopefully they'll be able to get back to regular business soon. We love Brett and his team at Provincial Glass and Mirror, as we do Carol Trickett from Trickett Financial, providing insurance and investments to Canadians and newcomers to Canada. Connect with Carol at TrickettFinancial.com. And always like to make sure that you know about the Turtle Tribe, where we are supporting and encouraging heart-centered entrepreneurs and creative souls so that they can experience more of what we all desire and deserve. Let's get to chatting with this young lady. Angela Dacey, as I mentioned, I originally met her back in, oh, I'm trying to do the math now. It's 2020, so it would have been 2018, maybe even 2017. I can't quite remember. And when I met her, uh, it was at, actually at a Mo Mondays event in Aurora, Ontario. And she did not know that she was going to be speaking that night. <laughs> she kind of got tapped on the shoulder and called onto the stage. And I remember as I was sitting there preparing to do my own speech, 
thinking uh, very much about what I was going to say and, and working hard to try to uh, get myself in a state where I could remember it. And then here comes this young lady who just rockets onto the stage sight unseen and delivers um, just a really, really wonderful uh, few minutes of sharing that left me thinking, wow, <laughs> uh, that's impressive. And we've been pals ever since. What do you remember about that night, Angela? Thank you. Um, not a whole lot. <laughs> I, think I, I think if I'm not mistaken, it was a snowstorm. Yes. And I I got, I kind of thought to myself, do I go? Don't I go? And I was like, yeah, let's just go for some entertainment. I think I had like sweatsuit on. Like I was really no makeup, didn't do my hair. I wasn't there for any reason, but to sit back and just have some entertainment on a cold winter night. <laughs> and when I got asked to go up, I'm I don't know. I'm, I'm used to, I did improv for 10 years. So I'm used to just saying, um, sure. Yeah, I'll do it. And uh, I don't remember even what I spoke of. I just remember thinking, well, what do I need to talk about? Let's give it a shot. And, and it was fun. And that's how we met. <laughs> so. That was also the, the night I first met WT Hamilton. Oh, uh, that's right. And I'd forgotten about the snowstorm. You're right. It was a January yeah. night. I remember it took me about three and a half hours to get home where it normally would take just a shade under two. Um, and WT was there. So of all of the um, places to meet somebody from the same yeah. Uh, city. And, and he and I well, clearly had never met before, um, but I've become real close pals since. And, and the two of you are tight also, aren't you? Right. Yeah. Love him. He's amazing. Shout out to him. Yeah. Uh, episode 84, for those who uh, have not followed the podcast or you want to learn about WT, I highly recommend doing that. What was, um, Angela, what were the circumstances that would even have had you in a room like that night where we met, where you were at Amo Monday's Aurora and uh, had done improv and, and felt comfortable kind of as a speaker with stories to tell? What was the alchemy that, that even led you to being in a, an environment like that? Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a big supporter of my friends and what they have going on and different events in the area. I always think we need to support each other, especially as entrepreneurs. And at the time, uh, Brendan and Bob were running um, the Mo Mondays. And, and I think they kept asking me to come out. I thought, yeah, you know, you know how you just trust your instincts? The instinct was, yeah, tonight's the night. I got nothing else going on. I want to do it. And I was, I just pushed myself, but I must have meant I meant I must have been meant to go because not only did I speak and have fun with the spontaneity, which I'm thrilled you remember me for, but I met you and I met WT and uh, it was a lot of fun and I'm glad I just did it. Um, so for me, I had already done speaking as well beforehand. Um, I kind of was getting back into the industry a little bit and that was another thing for me is I was checking out Mo Monday because I wanted to look at, hey, maybe I'll speak, you know, on stage here and get back into the the feel again. So obviously I did because it was pretty spontaneous, but it was fun. And I love that about it. Sometimes you just have to take a chance and see what happens. And like I said, I don't even remember what I spoke about. Do you remember? I don't remember. No, no, no I don't. And it, it it's a testament, actually, that answer to that old saw about that we don't necessarily remember out uh, the words and what we say to each other but that we'll remember how somebody made us feel that's true and isn't it interesting how when we get ourselves into these kinds of environments these connections um happen and i guess i would describe your personality uh as colorful aside from just from warm and genuine and, and loving uh, colorful. So I'm, I'm curious, before we dive too much further into the conversation, for those who find this episode, when I say live life colorfully, what would you suggest to people that that has meant to you, both kind of personally and professionally? Take as long as you want, because I know that's a big question. <laughs> that is, and you know, you're the first person to ask me that ever. And I've had this company 25 years. Um, that's a really good question. When I, for me, it invokes a feeling of being alive. It's about experiencing joy, experiencing being in the present moment, um, taking gratitude, finding blessings over the curse. Live life colorfully to me is how do we just go a little further to really embrace? It also means wear a little bit more color, <laughs> experiment mm. a bit more, look outside the damn box. Um, you know, we're so used to in North America being a society that is so surrounded by dark colors and, and blacks and especially in the winter. So Live Life Colorfully is also about 
if color can affect your thoughts and feelings, then we can use that as a tool like vitamins and minerals. Why aren't we using it more? But I think the whole slogan, Live Life Colorfully, I've really embraced that in the last maybe six -ish years, seven years, because um, my company is actually called Heaven and Earth. But I came, I really narrowed down my niche to just focus on teaching about color and color psychology. And because of that, um, Live Life Colorfully came to my mind and it was like, that's me. And that's what life is about. What can you do now to live in the moment? And what we're going through right now with the whole COVID-19 really shows, are you focused in negative thoughts and feelings or are you someone who can really embrace the blessings that we are finding at this time? And yeah, so that's what Live Life Colorfully means to me. Um, hopefully that makes sense. What's it mean to you, to Kevin? <laughs> that was well played. I wasn't expecting you to turn the tables on me like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's only fair. It's only fair. Um, I didn't know that your company was called Heaven and Earth. I thought it was called Live Life Colorfully. See, this is why we have these conversations is uh, we destroy these assumptions that we have. You know, um, just to tell you, it's only a slogan, but I get introduced all the time as it's Angela from Live Life Colorfully, when actually that's my slogan, Heaven and Earth is my company. But I, I strictly promote from the Live Life Colorfully because being a marketing person, you have to stay consistent and you have to narrow your niche down. So I've done, I think, a good enough job if people think that's my company name. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> and Doesn't that, uh, well, here's another one of my favorite quotes or ideas is... Um, from the old book, Captain Blood, I'll remind you, sir, the nature of a thing is not changed by the name you give it, which to me means you can call yourself whatever the hell you want. But it's um, in marketing. Now I could go down this branding road where um, I see uh, small business people and entrepreneurs being coached by gurus and experts on how to uh, slog through choosing just the perfect name. Well, to me, the name means nothing unless you build the context and the story around it. And that's your brand. And so you, I think that that that, that this speaks to that of, of how um, of how well that you, you've done that with that idea of live life colorfully. I'm not avoiding your question, by the way, but before I, I answer it, um, again, for those that may not know you that, that come to this conversation to, to help them understand, I mean, you have made this, uh, the introduction, the understanding of, the application of, the psychology of color into something that, that really has been a, a business for you for a long time, haven't you? Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's just been one of those fascinating tools I found. I mean, you know, and I never even said, thank you for having me on this program. Thank you for having me on this program. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, Thanks it. for being on we it. We dove right in. I'm so honored. Um, you know, I love you to bits and I, I would be on every day with you. I think we'd have so much fun. Um, so with, with something like color, if I back it up just really quickly, I had a store on Main Street Newmarket for seven years called Heaven and Earth. And my slogan at that time was unique gifts to inspire and uplift the spirit. My thought at the time was when you can't give flowers, what do you give? I had a couple of family members that were chronically ill. Um, I know people were going through things like grief, um, you know, separation, divorce. How do you uplift someone's spirits and not just give flowers? No offense to the flower world because I love flowers. Um, so the store really became a place for people to find inspiration. I, you know, it was everything from angels and aromatherapy to the color therapy, magnetic therapy. It was uplifting posters and books. It's a lot of what we see now, but 20 ish years ago. And um, like I was selling Eckhart Tolle and Lisa Nichols and all their books and stuff before they were even on Oprah. <laughs> so anyway, so that led me to moving into a biofeedback machine uh, that was from Germany, that was the world's most advanced system at the time to show how thoughts and feelings affect our health. That led me into realizing there's no courses that were available um, in Ontario, let alone Canada, that taught people this. I had to go to California, I had to go um, to Colorado. So I thought, let's make my own. So I started my own courses, then I started retreats. One thing just led to the other, led to the other. And then when my, I can call it my downfall of 2012, when my life fell apart, um, went through a divorce and my dad died and my son was ill and I had to renovate a house and move out on my own for the first time in my life. And everything happened within a two year time period. When I finally took time to do my healing, one of the elements I found that was so phenomenal for me was color. And then when I looked at building my business back up again after taking a few years off, 
it came back to, I love color. I mean, I played with it as a kid. I love, love coloring. I love chalk drawing. Um, I always wanted to have my clothes picked out the morning of, you know, my mom wanted to pick out my clothes the night before and I hated it because I was like, no, I need to know tomorrow how I feel. So I always love color. Um, so I just decided if I was going to help people and the self-help world was really becoming a prominent industry, but it was also a heavy industry because it's a lot of work to work on yourself. I wanted to make it fun. And I thought color is one of those things that everyone can remember, like, the crayon, they pulled out of the crayon box. Like, remember the 64 colors of crayons? Do you remember mm -hmm. that? The mm -hmm. box? Do you remember your first color you picked? Well, no, I don't. Okay, so no worries. I would probably say 80% of the people I talk to do remember. Um, like if I'm doing a large talk corporately or something and I ask that question, I'd say about a good 75 to 80% of the people put their hand up. I remember mine, which was turquoise and then silver. But the people who do remember their colors, it's so profound of what that color means and what their journey's been in this life. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's so true. So color's something for me, I'm probably rambling now, but color is something for me that everyone can relate to, doesn't matter what culture, what country, what background, what religion, it's, it's, it's global and it's easy and it's fun. I don't even know if I answered your question because I got ramblings. I love talking. Uh, well, I, this is just going to be a freestyle uh, COVID lockdown kind of conversation that goes wherever cool. the hell it goes. I know that you're always up for that because I haven't even answered your question yet. That's and true. with what you just shared, there are so many avenues that we could go down um, to explore those things. Hopefully we can get to as many of them as possible here over the next little while. Um, Thank you for setting the stage. I wanted you to do that before I came to answer your question because you are uh, coming across me for this conversation at a time where color is probably meaning more to, to me than, than anything, Angela, or that any time in my life. Um, that if you had, if, if you were to rewind and that the Kevin that's having this conversation with Angela now could introduce himself to the Kevin of around the time when you were having your, what did you call it? Downfall of life, <laughs> or downfall of 2012. Yeah, mine came um, 2010 and 11. Oh. Um, and one of the things, the roads that I, I'm, I'm interested in is the word that you mentioned, healing. And, and when you say sat down to do my healing. I'm, I'm fascinated about how that's an always evolving process. At least mm -hmm. it has been for me, as opposed to sitting down and going, okay, I'm, I'm just going to decide to heal now or to to find my purpose or figure things out. Um, but one of the things that I never would have been able to have a conversation about, for instance, would be uh, chakra energy or, uh, or the colors associated with, with that. Mm -hmm. And um, these are the kinds of things that now are really starting to get my attention, even to the point where this morning I was looking at, it was one of those recommended posts on Instagram, I think, that when I was just mindlessly scrolling through the feed, it had to do with some of those colors. And I've recognized, now I'm rambling, but I think you'll see where I'm going. Um, th through this, th I've been spending a lot more time at home. And normally I, I, I dress as I would if I were going into an office, but I've been wearing my, you know, my Under Armour athletic pants more than ever because I just find I'm more comfortable and I stop to do more stretching and things like that. But I noticed that like, I look at, okay, I'm going to choose a pair of, or choose a, a shirt to go with those. And I'm like, Kevin, every, okay, your pants are like dark gray or sort of charcoal colored. Got a couple of different pairs of them, but they're both dark. Right. And the shirts, I got a drawer full of shirts that are like t-shirts and stuff that I don't wear all that much. So I've only just kind of become aware of them. And they're all the same color. They're all dark. They're all charcoal. And I'm like, well, you can't wear the same color on top. So I've got this one sort of vibrant orange shirt, of course, that I don't have on now. And you could see the tops, the, the charcoal that I'm talking about. I didn't about. know we color today. You're on, you're on doing a talk with me. <laughs> well, I, I, so maybe it's just appropriate because this wasn't at all conscious. Um, but I've got that one bright orange shirt because it's from my son's hockey team. And then the rest are all very dark blues, blacks, charcoals, grays, a couple of whites. Uh -huh. But... And, and those are the clothes that I would wear for myself. Uh -huh. I have a lot of bright pinks, purples, 
um, things like this that I wear when I show up in the world. But right. for myself, a lot of a lot of monochrome, a lot of charcoal, a lot of darkness. Um, Explain that. So, so well, when you talk about living life colorfully, it's funny that I to me, I literally just today have been thinking about that and thinking, man. It's time to introduce a little bit more color into the, okay. the equation here, Kevin. What, what's your thought there? Okay, a couple of thoughts. So thanks for being so open and honest, too, yeah. and a little vulnerable. Um, on one hand, congratulations, because you're you're now aware. And when you become aware, you can have fun using the different colors and see mm -hmm. how you feel with each one. When you're wearing a lot of black and charcoal, I'm kind of not surprised for you when you're at home. The reason being is you're a very personable what I see is an extroverted person. You connect, you're doing interviews, um, which is a very colorful way to live, right? You're very out there. And when you're out there and you're expressing your personality and who you are and connecting, think of that as all the colors. So when you come home and you're in the blacks and you're in the charcoals and you're in the gray, blacks actually say, you know what? It's not about me right now. It's about you. Or it kind of says, I just want to be by myself. I'm not going to show any emotion or expression. And so think of, I always say, when we go to a funeral and we wear black, it's not about us. It's about them. So out of respect, we put black on to say it's not about us. Hmm. Sometimes people, though, that wear black all the time are really saying, I'm not going to show you my true self. Now, if you, for example, being in such a communicative, expressive type of industry, if you were wearing black all the time in, in the public, I'd be like, yeah, you know what, Kevin? Someone's going to think that you just don't want to engage and you're not, you're not alive. You know, it's like you're cut off, you're dead. Black is no color. <laughs> so, but because you are expressive and you wear color when you are out, I think when you're home, it's probably your way of just getting inside and getting internal to say, okay, I just need some quiet time. I just need to kind of look within. I need to just, you know, be a little bit more alone. And it probably rejuvenates you a little bit. So it's, it's understanding it from a place of when do you need it and what it means. Once you start understanding each color, the power you have is incredible because then you'll know, oh yeah, this is what I need for right now. So that would be my thought for you considering you you wear a lot of color when you're out. Does that make sense? It does. I'm interested in your, well, I'm interested in everything that you said. Um, <laughs> the I, I think you're right that a lot of the work that, that I do is, is sort of extroverted in nature or would appear that way, but I consider myself very much an introvert. One of the things I've always, challenged or found challenging is that um, I feel very much at home uh, on the stage as I think you do or uh, whenever I've been behind the microphone in my radio days or things like that 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 mm -hmm. comes very naturally to me mm -hmm. but when when that's done uh, I feel very uncomfortable doing anything that I perceive to be uh, asking for attention mm -hmm. um, even posting things on social media I'm still working through a lot of layers of anxiousness and I don't know what the word is, just feelings of not naturalness, even just before I click publish. I'm, it's getting better. But um, so I would consider myself very much introverted. I may not be uh, an introvert who, who, who excels at doing a few introverted things but right. or extroverted things. But once I've done that, uh, I find that energetically I feel very depleted and you're right. I will kind of go into my shell and, uh, and, and like to sort of recharge. So I'm working very much at becoming more what I would call energetically even. Yeah. And so as I do that, coming back around to where we were, um, I'm, I'm quite fascinated by the, the different colors, how they associate with the energy, with the body, uh, with mm -hmm. different emotions and things like that. And again, to hear you talk about really being interested in and in, in having applied that over so many years mm. um, in your work and, and in your own life, it, it, it really resonates. And I'm, I'm betting that coming out of this global situation that we're in now with COVID-19, I suspect more people than ever are going to be open to be more conscious of these things, more awake, more aware, not in a, a up there in the clouds kind of a thing, but just even really being willing to, to, to notice more of what they respond to and what they don't, and then maybe investigate into why. What I do you think? So. I really hope so, because for me, it's preventative, right? And it's to mm. support. So if the more we can do that, whether it's essential oils, aromatherapy, color therapy, we're helping our bodies physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, which can only benefit us later. So 
Um, I would hope people are investigating and looking and taking the time to, you know, take the courses and, and read the blogs and find ways to support themselves, especially when there's something like this that's out of our control. When it's out of our control and we don't know what's coming tomorrow, we can only take care of ourselves. So I'm hoping that people really do embrace and start to learn and experiment. One of the things I just was thinking I want to mention as you were speaking, Kevin, um, it's funny because I think I'm an extrovert that's learned how to be introverted. <laughs> <in the laughs> balance. I've really loved my alone time. Um, it's it, when you start to learn the colors, you actually like, for example, you were talking about finding that voice and being able to feel like genuine and authentic. The color blue supports that. It's all about voicing your truth, finding your authenticity, communicating and expressing from the heart. So for example, if you had to do um, a talk or an interview, or maybe you were speaking on stage and you wore blue, you might not feel as depleted by the end of it as you would if you wore something different. So you can, once you know the colors like that, you can say, oh, wow, this is what I have going on today. Guess what color I'll wear? And, you know, interestingly, I always look at my closet and just say, what do I need to wear today? And I thought, I want something fun and colorful. And then I chose this like almost tropical, you know, top with blue, but I'm speaking to you and I want to talk about positivity and life and fun. And so it's, it's all the colors to support that. So when you, again, start to realize what it is you need, then you can utilize that as a tool. And that's like so powerful, so powerful. So hopefully that helps. And then depending on what you're up to and what you're doing, once you understand color, you'd be like, oh, man, I'm going to a comedy club tonight. I want to just have fun and laugh. I'm wearing that orange shirt for my son's soccer team because orange is all about playing and having fun and laughing and being spontaneous and living like a child. So then you'd be like, I'm going to wear the orange. And then you're going to end up with the night going, I feel great instead of going, oh, I feel exhausted. So it'll support you. It's interesting. I think um, red is a color that I've always thought that I had somewhat of an aversion to. That if I see red, I see a stop sign. Mm. Uh, and yet red is, is far and away my mother's favorite color. And when I start to, um, or, or as I've started to really investigate what, what it can mean as it relates to, as I mentioned earlier, like chakra energy and things like that, of being rooted, being grounded, um, I think, wow, okay, like I, you know, you tell me red, I see a stop sign, I see sunburn, I see irritation, I see agitation, I see unrest. Um, and then I investigate this other side of it, um, you know, the color of, of the heart. See, now I'm saying, if you say heart, I, I see green. <laughs> um, but, um, but that for many, it can represent love and, um, you know, grounding and being rooted and feeling safe and feeling supported. Um, what does red mean so, as far as you're concerned? So here's here's where this whole color thing can get really deep. And I'm not going to go too deep because um, you can take all the courses and do all that kind of stuff if you want to go that that deep. But here's the thing. Okay. Every single color, which I do relate to the chakras, um, has a positive and a negative thought or feeling that goes with it. Hmm. So if you get my book or you look at my blog or YouTube videos, you'll see what I'm talking about. Red, the negative is fear. The positive is passion and action. So think about that. You see the stop sign. So what's going to happen? You're going to try to move forward and you're going to be like, oh, I'm paralyzed. I have fear. I'm not moving. I'm stuck. Right? But the other person who doesn't have that issue is going to be like, oh, no, I'm moving forward. I see passion. I see action. So what happens is when we start to identify which negative thought or feeling is in your energy system, we start to get so much information. So the root chakra, here's a little synopsis is about the ages of zero to five. Between the ages of zero to five, it's all about survival need. So if for any reason something happened to you during those years, it could be something simple as maybe there was a physical ailment. Um, you know, it could be there was a divorce in the family. Maybe you moved a lot. Maybe there was a death. Even though you're only between the ages of zero and five, if there was any form of trauma, that could put a negative block, that stop sign up in that energy center. So what's gonna happen is that red is gonna seem negative to you. But it's also going to be like a block. I call it like a, a, a pebble, a stone or a boulder, depending on the size of it, in this beautiful flow of energy that we have. So if you, for example, um, say, you know, your father died, I'm just going to say at a young age, you were four years old, you didn't really know what was going on, but it was affecting you, obviously. That could hold you back when you're in your 30s and 40s and 50s to move forward because you haven't worked on healing that area. 
So this is where color gets phenomenal as well, as it can help us detect which thought and feeling is affecting us, which one's stopping, which one's helping us move forward. It's so detailed, it's actually incredible. Um, so if you had had that fear, it doesn't mean necessarily you had the most you know, huge trauma, but there's something that we probably investigate between the early ages of zero to five to say, what went on in your life at that time? How do we work through that, change those thoughts, see the beauty and the, and the blessing, uh, and then start moving you forward so that you can actually heal that area? Because red is connected to the physical immune system as well. So people who have um, immune dysfunctions, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, lupus, blood, bones, teeth issue, usually there's a blockage there. So it's pretty easy for me to even ask someone their favorite color and least favorite color, and their least favorite color is usually where there's a blockage. <laughs> pretty, it's pretty profound, but that's what I mean. Like you, we could dive into it and spend 10 hours on it. Well, maybe we can skirt the surface. I, I could see exactly. with, with some of the people that are watching, the numbers are going up as the more we were, because I, I, I'm fascinated in this and have become more so over the last year or so. Um, and I wonder if, if that might be with, with other people as well. Uh, but I don't want to steer you a place that you don't want to go. So just throw something oh. at me when you've had enough. I know. Um, <laughs> okay, well, so on the heels of what you just said, um, when I was uh, a very young boy, I was very sick with asthma, very asthmatic. And it was not anywhere near as controllable then as it is now. I was in and out of the hospital all the time. I did not feel safe. I did not feel secure. Wow. And now when I look back, at, and I'd never given that really a conscious passing thought, Angela. Wow. I, I never thought as, a, as an adult that that was particularly traumatic. But when I start looking into energy blocks and subconscious programming and limiting beliefs and all of these kinds of things uh -huh. and, and realize some patterns and become aware of patterns that have followed me through my whole life, um, I've only just recently kind of come to that and gone, oh, wow, like, no, I, I, I didn't feel safe. Right. I grew up in a loving home. I had loving parents. I had two great sisters. I, you know, I wasn't hungry. I didn't live through a war or anything like that, but I didn't feel safe. I, I didn't even feel like I was going to be able to breathe at wow. times. And whether it's that or a combination of things, I, I'm like, wow, whoa, okay. Is it um, powerful? Yeah. Yeah. So, it, depending on how severe the trauma is, I wouldn't necessarily throw a client right into the root chakra red. Sometimes it's too much. It'd be like jumping off, you know, the top of a building going, okay, let's just dive in and deal with this. Sometimes it's too much. But if you can handle little bits of it, you can start to heal it and blast it. So now yeah. you can start seeing where the awareness is half the battle. So now you can start seeing exactly what you're saying and maybe start bringing more red foods in, you know, have have a smoothie, have the, the raspberries, the strawberries, the red peppers, start cooking with reds more. Um, you might do something like throw some red cushions on your couch or use a nice warm red blanket. Uh, use an essential oil of patchouli and sandalwood. They're all of the red frequency. And then what you'll start to see is it's either going to affect you and irritate you, which means something needs to be cleared, or you're going to be like, wow, this is starting to feel good. I'm okay with this. Hmm. And you'll start to see the shifts. So it's, it's pretty, it's like it's, it's, a, it's a powerful tool and so simple. But once we have awareness about it, half the battle's there. And then when you acknowledge this is the issue, like say you just acknowledged, oh my gosh, I was in and out of the hospital. Then you're you're 75% there. So really you only have 25% left to get rid of that boulder yeah. and start giving yourself an opportunity to let the energy flow in that root chakra again. Is, and that I didn't mean to jump on you there. Um, this is what I was, at least I think I was getting at several minutes ago when I pointed out that you mentioned the word healing. And um, it fascinates me, Angela, how this, these um this healing it's and awareness is like i'm just trying to think of what the line is from shrek it was like onions it's like a cake you know what i like parfait it's like onions because it has layers and it's just that you just keep just dis discovering and discovering and discovering um and there was a uh, i was listening to a book on an audio book i was going to say a book on tape what the heck is tape an audio, an audio book because i was going through <laughs> um, uh, I was going on a drive just a little less than a year ago and I was, and I, I, I can't remember whether it was about that shocker or not, but it was about the shockers. And it, um, the, the author was saying something like, imagine yourself, and I'm going to invite anybody who's watching or listening to us now to go through the same exercise. Imagine yourself back, you know, in the, when you were younger in the family environment, 
uh, and without overthinking it, just tune into it and what automatically comes to mind in terms of what your role was in that, mm. in that group. And I said out loud, I'm the burden. <gasps> Whoa. And I, and I had never, I had, that had never come up. I, like I literally, I pulled off the road and cried because yeah. I, I was like, where did that come from? Yeah. And because I was the one that commanded so much attention that, that, that had to come away from my sisters and kept my mom up nights and was constantly at the doctor. And, um, but that was a holy shit. I, you know, I'm going to be 46 a couple of years or a couple of years, a couple of weeks from this conversation. And I didn't even know I was carrying that with me. Wow. That's huge. And I think all of us have something like that. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, is running our subconscious programming and we're talking about these blockages and things like that or where you know i say i see what you show me red i see a stop sign i see redness irritation inflammation um and then when i start to uncover boy yeah we could go on forever couldn't we but what's your reaction to something like that congratulations like hmm. seriously congratulations that was a breakthrough moment that was a complete breakthrough moment because again if awareness is half the battle you just allowed your subconscious to say this is the issue and in hindsight looking back i know it still created emotion for you so it's still there to a degree but in looking back you'll maybe be able to see how it was a necessity and how it's you know somehow framed your whole life and and you do what you do today you know, I'm even looking at how much you voice and you speak and you interview and you're on stage and you're using those lungs and you're spreading the love, which is from the chest, the, the heart and the lungs, and you're using breath of light. You know, it's interesting to me, would you have followed similar paths if you hadn't had that issue at the beginning? And that's when you can start seeing the blessings. Um, it's not an easy thing, but but every single thing, I'm a real believer in this, that every single thing that you've gone through in life has brought you to where you are today. And you've needed to go through it, no matter how horrific it may have been. Um, you know, I have a girlfriend that I work with that she goes in and, and is fighting for rehabilitation in prisons. And I work with her with Flip the Script. So I'll give a shout out to Flip the Script. And I started working with guys who were, you know, from addictions and who have been incarcerated. And I never thought in a million years I would ever work with people who have led that type of life. And in the grand scheme of things, I just realized after working with them and teaching them about this is that, you know, we're all the same. We all just want self-love. We all are looking for self-worth and the situations that are going to appear to us to get us there. That's our story. That's our journey. And so your journey was feeling that being the asthmatic, you know, younger brother. Um, and, and maybe there's so many reasons for that. Like, for example, if your sister turned out to be a nurse, maybe that's why or you know, people become doctors because there was someone in their family who was ill. Um, I very much got into personal development to heal my own story of sexual abuse, as well as to help heal family members that had immune dysfunctions. So would I have done this otherwise? So you have to take a look at at where the beauty is. And, and I'll tell you something else. This is this sounds maybe kind of deep, too. But here's something if any if your listeners are watching. I think of life as a, a spiral, kind of like a slinky. You know, if you took a slinky and you went this way. Oh, what a wonderful toy. <laughs> it is. Life, eh? Yeah. So, so what happens is, I believe, we have certain things that we have to learn in life. So, for example, boundaries have been a really big issue for me. And, mm -hmm. and it, it's massive. So something big happens to cross my boundaries. And then you think you heal from it and the life comes around and it goes, oh, you think you're good? Yeah, boom, Let's see if you are good, let's do this again. Oh yeah, okay, okay. So you keep going in life and keep getting the same lesson over and over again, but every time you're getting to a new height to look at it from a different perspective. Mm. So as soon as a situation comes up, I can stop now and go, oh crap, that's why I'm upset. Cause I always say, what's this about for me? You know, I had an issue this week and it, it, it ticked me off and I was like, okay, well, What's this about for me? And then as soon as I went, oh, there's my boundaries getting tested again. Damn. You know, but I recognized it. I saw it. It was like, okay, how do I handle this? So if you realize you're going to go through life with that same spiral, you'll be prepared for it. You'll be ready for it. And every time you'll see it from a different perspective, 
and then you can use the tools we're offering to help you get there fit like a little bit quicker and faster. And I don't know if I just went way too deep or, but I trust whatever comes through. <laughs> well, uh, well, I can't speak for anyone who might be watching or listening, but what uh, immediately comes to mind uh, when I hear you share something like that is uh, something I've become quite interested in recently and in, in how um, you, cellular memory, destructive cellular memory, and how there can be a trauma. And there's another word, and it came up in a recent podcast with Chantel Wache from Space to Grow Studio, trauma, that I've always associated the word trauma as uh, that you almost have to earn the right to use that word by having been through something very horrific. Mm. When in fact, that um, just the way that we can perceive what may on the surface appear to be a very um, uh, normal or simple event, um that the memory that we imprint on that and the feelings that get associated with it whether they be guilt or shame or uh, feeling separate or, or different or flawed or any of those kinds of things that any time through the rest of our life that we come across uh, a situation where that's that gets triggered mm -hmm. uh, that reintroduce we feel viscerally physiologically um, that trauma all over again Oh, um, mm. unless we're able to shine that light on it and understand that it's there and where it's coming from. Right. And then we can get back into the, like actually look at the process of healing. Like you were giving some tips on, in my case, the, the color red and so forth. Like I mentioned about being burdensome. And I, I, I thought you know, for people who are watching and listening, not to turn this into a, a therapy session about Kevin or about Angela, but to, in the interest of sharing, of how how would that apply? Well, like in work, Angela, I've had a lot of my career where I've had to be in some form of sales. I've always been very good at it, but it's mm -hmm. always brought me a very visceral feeling of unease and anxiousness. And, and I've always been able to recognize that, but I've always told myself there's something wrong with you. All these other people here in the sales meeting seem to be fine with this. Mm -hmm. They just pick up the phone and call. They just walk into the business. And for me, I would always feel like I had to do way more and give way more of myself. And when I understand that I had this thing from way back from when I was a little kid that I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm the burden, right. then I, I, now it makes sense. Like, well, no, no wonder I have a hard time asking people for help or putting out a social post or people would have no idea how much anxiety I'm working through every single time before I go on the stage. Mm -hmm. The thing is that I'm doing it now because I'm not going to let that programming run my life for me. Okay. I'm going to steer the ship. But the difference is that for almost 40 years, I didn't know what was steering the ship. Yeah. But, but those patterns can really run our lives without us even knowing them. And they're all about coming back to self-love. Like that's mm. something I've learned in the 25 years of doing this type of work is every single story and journey we have is for us to find self-worth and self-love. That's what it comes down to. You can't love everybody until you love yourself. You can give love, but you can also exhaust, exhaust your heart area. But I find that whatever, you know, the smallest issue to the largest, it comes to how worthy do you feel? And are you, are you going to believe that you are worthy? And when you start to really own it and feel it, life changes. And you start to see so many things in gratitude. And life becomes more colorful. It really becomes a place of seeing the blessings all the time and how everything is for you, to teach you, to help you grow, to help you share, to help your spirit actually do the work it's meant to do while it's here. So, you know, it's interesting as we're talking, I'm feeling like it's almost full circle to say, that's why this is about living life colorfully. When we have self-love and self-worth, we live life more colorfully. And, and that's, I think, in the grand scheme of everything I've always taught, it comes back to let's heal these negative thoughts and feelings. Let's, you know, whether it's the fear, the high expectations or the, the judgments, the guilt, the blames, let's get rid of all those. Let's heal those, send them on their way and say, thank you so much. You know, I've learned a lot from them. Time to move on. We need to heal this. And so that we can really live life the way that we need to. Um, I just believe that, you know, life is really short and we need to make the most of it and do the most with what we have here now. And, and being with this whole COVID experience, 
it's been very, very awakening to me to see, and, and God bless everyone who's got the panic and the fear, because I, I feel them. But it's been very phenomenal for me to see the people who have resorted to the complete fear, uh, to where not only are we isolated and stuck in a box, unable to move per se, um, but we're scared to even move forward in any way, shape or form. So isn't it interesting, this whole COVID in a sense too, is also testing us and test, testing our survival, testing our health, um, our heart chakra, our connection. Do we have faith over fear? Are we looking to a higher source for support? I, you know, when things like this happen in life, um, it's, it's always happening for us. And that would be my thought for the, the people watching is whatever's happening in your life right now, you know, take a look at how it's happening for you, not to you. And then you'll start to see life in a different way and hopefully live a little bit more colorfully at the same time. You had indicated to me when I reached out to you a week or two ago that even at the time of this conversation, you're feeling some reflection, certainly. I, I almost reached for the word upheaval. I don't know if that word is fair, but um, how fair is it to suggest that, that, that at this time, you're just kind of looking around and sensing and reevaluating and not in any particular hurry, but certainly open to maybe that um, some new chapter is almost about to begin. Oh, for sure. And, and you know, I'm really glad you brought that up because a lot of people think that, you know, if we're in this this world that, you know, life is always like sunshine, lollipops and roses all the time. <laughs> and that's not true. Um, you know, it's interesting uh, as a, you know, a, a woman on my own and, and raising, you know, I've got my daughter still at home, my son's in university, you know, but working on my business and, and maintaining, it's been, it's been a tough decade since that 2010 to 12 happened. And, you know, I think I mentioned to you, so I'll tell you here was that, Oh, it was a it was a Facebook post. Someone had posted something, and it's it was uh it made me say like, "Why? That's kind of cool." It said, "What's one thing you should stop right now?" And normally, I'm like, "What's one thing I should do?" Because I, I love I'm actually very much a human doing too, and being <laughs> I'm a high achiever. So I was like, "What do you mean I should stop? You know, go 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 go." And the the words that came into my head, which I think I expressed to you, was "Stop your business." And mm. I seriously was like, "What?" Like, what? Who said that? <laughs> um, and I'm very tuned in with my my support, spiritual support group. So I, you know, I felt like my angels and guides and somewhere were coming through to me. But I was like, what do you mean stop my business? And I had this vision of me pushing the ball uphill constantly. And I thought, you know, in a way, they're right. I've built my business up so much that I I really can sit back in a sense. I've got my products and my courses and my, you know, everything going on. I'm like, what if I just sat back and enjoyed this time? Like, what if I, what if I just kept on? I love doing posts. I love my marketing. I keep doing that. I love my interviews. What if I didn't put pressure on myself, my own personal pressure, because I'm a high achiever, to constantly be in the human doing? What would happen if I used this time and just was a human being? I felt this huge relief all of a sudden. It was like, ah, and I felt like the universe was like, yes, please, can you just take some time? And you know, I have been, and I'm probably the most relaxed I have felt in a very long time. Um, I've, you know, brought in some creative crafts that I love, uh, working with beads and color. Um, you know, I'm taking some courses I like to take online. I'm connecting with friends. So I switched my mindset from this kind of like, what am I going to do? And how am I going to make the money? And what needs to be done next? And do I write the book, the next book? And to like, oh, just allow yourself to be so I was just saying to a friend today, we were just uh, chatting earlier and we were like, this is actually like a really beautiful blessing on how much time we have. So things happen. Um, but again, I took a look at what could this do for me? And then all of a sudden I've started to really, really appreciate the time that I have. And I, I feel like my, my body, mind and soul is thanking me. Yeah, and it's difficult to do that if you're paralyzed by that, by a focus on fear isn't it and uh and then one of the other things is you know, being aware and empathetic to those who are really being um viscerally affected by what's going on mm -hmm. um but sitting and worrying and, and, and crying and and being in a constant state of grief probably isn't helping those people you know you know, 
it's i'm always one to say if you have to express express like yeah. you know it's crying to me is just it's an emotion it's energy emotion yeah. my concern is as if it's stopping you from living life mm. if it's if it's holding you back from living then it becomes an issue and a problem you know if the fear is so paralyzing that the norm is not the norm anymore then i would get concerned um you know i for something like this take a look at how many people say like they can't wait for friday they don't like their job they can't wait for the weekend great if you had you know two months of freedom and that was your long weekend what would you do with it and i think right now we're at this beautiful place where it's like we could still go for a bike ride we i've been baking like crazy you know you can take a course um i heard harvard has courses for free right now you can have like there's so many people you know providing yoga and workouts and kickboxing uh zumba classes they're all free and you know there's djs that are actually like putting on live two to three hour you know sets so you feel like you're at a club there's so much you can do so i think our constriction is according to what you feel your constriction is does that make sense it does and i also think it's important to, to know that although none of us knows uh, how exactly things are going to look going forward that mm -hmm. the way that things are now will not be a forever thing yeah so we have to trust, trust the journey yeah and so it is you know every challenge is also an opportunity uh, I've been finding a real um, tendency to go more inside myself. And I, after about a year of rereading books that are already on my shelf, which I, I found was, was interesting because I considered myself a pretty voracious reader and learner. I feel stimulated by that and went through a period of several years of aggressively reading new things. Over the last year to 18 months in July, I found that I, I didn't have an appetite for new stuff. I was um, I was going back over things that were already on my shelf that I was reading again and finding that I was I was taking uh, a new perspective from. But since this lockdown hit with COVID nineteen, uh, I've just been <laughs> inhaling <laughs> books like The Untethered Soul, The Healing Code, Power of Now. You mentioned that you used to sell Eckhart Tolle at your um, at your store years ago. Uh, I'm almost all the way through said guru's inner engineering now and yeah. just you know sometimes it's like when you're you find yourself hungry for a certain food and then you just go and you gorge on it for a bit yeah. you're like I could just eat this forever or um, ACDC's music is like this every couple of years I just I need to hear Angus Young's riff but it's kind of <laughs> like when you're a kid and you eat a whole yeah. bunch of Halloween candy after a while you're like yeah you know I think I'm full I'm good <laughs> But it's just you get that wave and, and you ride it. And right now, yeah. while well, for some people, depending on what their role is, um, they're on overdrive. They don't have time to yeah. sit and reflect and have courses because they're, they're, you know, our nurses, our doctors, our grocery store workers, and they're on overdrive right now. Hopefully they'll have an opportunity to be where some of us are. But, but if, if you're in the spot like what, what, what I'm like, and it sounds like you're like, that you're still working, you're you're at this, and you're in, but you're also reflecting and investigating and reprioritizing and being really open to. Now that I'm I'm in this, let me think about how I went into it. How do I want to come out of it? Yes. And, and if I consider how I want to come out of it, that's going to really help determine of how I'm going to spend my time while I'm in it. Yeah, it's it's a it's an amazing time for us to take a look at at the thoughts and feelings that are with us for positive enhancement and what are holding us back. Um, I mean, even take a look at our frontline workers, which, you know, power, more power to them, like God bless them. But look at the courage they're showing us. Yeah. Look at the compassion they're showing us. Look at the faith they're showing us. You know, these people, no expectations, they go in, they do their job, they're, they're there for us. Um, you know, let's send them as much love and light as we possibly can because they're also showing us maybe what we need to embrace within ourselves. Do we have that same amount of courage? Do we have that same amount of compassion? What could we do to be a little bit more like them? Um, this is a great reflective time for sure. Whether you are someone who's continuing to work, uh, you're doing it on your own, you know, or you're a frontline worker, it's, it's a good time. Things are going to be popping up, some that affect us, some that enhance us. 
uh, I think, like I said, awareness is the key and, and everything is for us. So regardless of what's happening, we and I love what you said. How did I come into this and how do I want to move forward through this? That's powerful, Kevin, because uh, we have a choice to make that change. Right. And, and to rise above. And I, I love that because it does make us take a look at, OK, if we're say we're back to life, I don't want to say the norm because it's going to be different. But you know what I'm saying? If we're back to whatever in three months time, six months time, what's that look like? And, yeah. and are we going to spend more time with the kids? Are we going to have more stay-at-home dinners? Um, are we going to go bike riding more, walk the trails more? Or how, you know, we, we can take a really good look at, you know, are becoming more of a human being. Yeah, a lot of us um, in one form or another are off the hamster wheel now. Yeah, I know for me, it feels nice. <laughs> so, I mean, even for those who are, the wheels just changed a little bit because they may be working from home. And, and again, for some people, you, you've got kids and the kids are scrambling to mm -hmm. try to do the at-home learning and parents are trying to figure out how to do their jobs and, and, and that besides. But I still, I wonder like, okay, well, once the hamster wheel starts spinning again, uh, how will it spin differently than it did before? Because things are not going to be the same and I don't think we want them to. Um, so here's how people can come in. I'm butting in because it just yes. I'm going to butt in. So so coming back, here's where color can come in and can be so much fun. So like, say, for example, you're on that hamster wheel and you're mm -hmm. going, 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 going. Right. Great. So now you're like, ah, now you start to learn that green relaxes the muscles and actually helps the nerves. So maybe you paint your living room green and you make sure you have that hour of time with the kids, whether you're playing a game with them or watching a show with them, but you're surrounded by green energy. And then maybe in your office, you paint your office yellow because yellow stimulates the mind and helps the memory. So when you're in your office, you've got that tick, 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 I'm alert, I'm aware, I'm good. But the rest of your house is like, ah, peaceful. Maybe your bedroom's in blue or has a blue comforter because it helps induce sleep, helps reduce stress. And this is where we can find, I want to say that word balance, but this is where we can find that to say, if we want to become more human beings than just human doings, then where can we bring color in to help us with that? And I think this is where we can have some fun with the color, especially when you start to understand what kind of personality you are. So before we wrap up, I was going to ask you if you're game for this, because it almost in my mind feels a little bit cliche, except <laughs> I was really enjoying all that conversation about red. I wonder if anybody was watching a while back and like, oh, they're going to go through all the colors. And then that guy oh. wouldn't stop flapping his lips about his shit from his life and come back well, when you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, is it okay if we go through some of those and just have a little bit of fun with it? Um, yeah. And I'm just thinking about the body and I'm going to go back to, to red and then I'll jump up to, to orange. Um, okay. Let me give you the synopsis. Please. <laughs> if you have questions, ask. I'm, I'm uh, oh, I will. Like, okay. So I'm going to go through it. Red and orange are two physically based colors. So we have physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. Reds and oranges are physical based color. Red is that real survival, like I said, passion and action. Like if you're a marathon runner, you know, or a hockey player, or this is why the Toronto Maple Leafs, I got to change that leaf to a red because it's about action and it's about moving forward. I think that's why our Raptors did so well last they year. They also have to change the song they play after they score a goal. Nobody's getting intimidated by Hall and Oates. <laughs> Shanahan, do better and change that friggin' song at the end from Slapshot for crying out loud. Throw some Metallica, do anything. It's embarrassing. Stop. <laughs> Sorry, I uh, <clears throat> I felt a little triggered there. That's the red coming through. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, I apologize. Um, yeah, no, at no. least with this lockdown, the Leafs aren't playing much below their potential. Back to orange, physical based color. Yeah. So, Thank so you. red you want to use when you physically need some form of power, action, movement. Uh, healing health, okay? Like the physical body. Like you want to wear it when your immune system's low. Uh, like I said, when you have problems with bone, bloods, teeth. Uh, you want it to be where you, you know, maybe you you feel lazy and you got to get up and get moving, get some red track pants on. So that's where red comes in. Now, the positive word for red is passion. The negative is fear. So this is where the two have to try to find, you know, where you are more on the, the scale. Now, the physical aspect of orange is a playful, hands-on physical experience. The positive word is joy. The negative is expectations. 
and we have expectations, if not of ourselves, of others, mainly usually of ourselves. When we have high expectation of ourselves and others, we kill the joy. You know, like if you expect that friend to call on your birthday and they don't call, you totally can wreck your whole birthday. Mm -hmm. I can't believe they didn't call me. You know, or if you go play golf and you expect to get a 72 on the course and you don't, then your whole game is thrown off. So expectations kill joy. Get rid of the expectations. Go with the flow. And, and Orange is about that creative hands-on, like people who are carpenters, um, people even who are, are frontline workers are very much in the red-orange uh, element for hands-on work, okay? So that's your, does that make sense for red and orange? Any questions on those two? No, I'm good there. Why don't we jump up to the, okay. uh, the solar yellow. color, yellow. Okay, so yellow, the solar plexus is your mental base color. The positive word is courage, as we were talking about our frontline workers. The negative is the judgment. So as soon as you judge yourself, <laughs> like you just, I was like, stop it. <laughs> yeah. You block that flow of courage, but it's also the center to stimulate the mind, the memory. Think of yellow post-it notes. It helps stimulate the mind. And this is where I love working with the corporate world and with branding and marketing, because we are marketed to with color so insanely. It's, it's amazing. Um, think of fast food restaurants or red, orange, and yellow, because they stimulate fast in, out, move, eat, right? So, well, you know, once you start to understand it, you can brand accordingly too, which is amazing. Um, so yellow you want for positivity, for sunshine, for happiness, but it does stimulate and helps the digestive system too, I should say. I don't recommend it in a bedroom unless you've actually got massive digestive issues because you'll be awake all night. <laughs> so, and I can attest to that because I grew up in a yellow bedroom. Um, so that's, that's the mental is just yellow. Any questions on that one? No, you talked about green a little bit but um okay so i don't know how we are for time so i'll try to be fast you can take as long as you want oh okay i didn't know if we had like exactly an hour <laughs> oh, no no we're on the internet baby it's like oh, the wild man. west it's like international waters <laughs> oh okay, good good want the rush okay so green and blue are our emotional base colors so green has to do with the heart center, the heart chakra, and blue is the throat. Green is all about the balance of giving and receiving. It's what can I give? What can I receive? You know, if you've been brought up to say, oh, it's much better to give than to receive, it doesn't make sense. If you are giving, somebody is receiving, and in order for it to be balanced, you have to flow, right? So be happy to receive as much as you're happy to give. Um, so green is also the center that helps get rid of guilt, which is the negative word for that one. And it's about balance and that's the positive. So how can we balance? It's also the center energy for all. We have three chakras above, three below. Um, so this is our heart center. Also very important right now when COVID hits the respiratory, uh, whole area, I'm like, okay, how much are these people who are really suffering? Are they givers and there's no energy left? Do they need to learn to receive? It's very interesting. Blue is the throat chakra. It's still an emotional base energy center, but it's about voicing from the heart and voicing to our spirit center. It's communication and expression. Uh, and the positive word is truth. The negative is excuses because when you always have an excuse, there's never the truth. And so blue helps us speak the truth of love and be authentic about it. So greens and blues are very calming, very soothing. Um, very heart centered and and i find they're the best colors actually blue is the world's most favorite color and it's also the most two relaxing colors you can find so how's emotional center so far good emotional center is good now we're going to get up into the the head and beyond here huh i'm so glad you know this okay so you have the indigo center here and the crown violet here so this one Think of this center, the third eye, is about your inner spirit looking in. It's all about finding inner peace and getting rid of blame. So if you ever think someone's blaming, they're pointing the finger, they're like, yeah, you said this. Well, there's three fingers pointing back. So really that's about, whoa, what's this about again for me? So it stops you from blaming in order to get inside to find that inner peace. It's also the color, that dark purple, which is really nice to help connect with your angels and guides, your messengers, your intuitive side. So when you get that feeling that says, don't turn right, turn left, that's your, your third eye opening up and, and the divine source starting to help you. And I love that. The top chakra uh, is the violet color. And this is where I call it the connection to the outer spirit. So we have the inner and the outer. So this is where we connect to the highest divine source, whether you want to say God, Allah, Jah, omnipresent, 
whatever you want to do, this is the most creative. This is when we get those phenomenal ideas and we don't know where they came from or the miracles that just happen and we don't understand why. Um, or we just know when someone we meet them, they're our soulmate. This, this is the energy that comes through. Um, I find it so healing. It's that beautiful violet. I love it, um, especially in times like this when, again, we're out of control in the situation we're in. I look to the violet. Um, I did a, a video that's on Instagram and Facebook and such too that uh, is about faith over fear and bringing in the violet color energy to help you through this time. So when you take a look at red and orange is physical, yellow is mental, green and blue is emotional, indigo and violet spiritual, when we have them working and flowing, then I call it like that, you know, I always think of like God pouring water over my head and it comes all the way down into my feet and it's like this beautiful river then everything's moving forward and we can take that creative source and bring through our mission and, and move forward in life. When there starts to be that negative thought or feeling, it's like little pebbles that end up sitting in these different chakras that, that stop the flow. And if they continue over long periods of time, they grow into stones and then boulders. And we don't want that to happen because that's when we can actually end up with physical ailments. Did you did you say what the positive and negative words were for both Violet and for the... Oh, or for I think, I, okay, Indigo, sorry. Indigo, the negative was blame, and the positive was inner peace. And in Violet, sorry, the negative was denial, and okay. the, pos the positive's belief. In, I have trouble picturing Indigo and Violet. To me, they both sound purple. <laughs> so Indigo, think of Indigo as like the dark like plums uh purple grapes okay. uh, grape juice you want to look at that deep dark purple that almost sometimes can have a, a navy blue effect to it violet has a little bit more of the pink tone to it so you're looking a little bit more like um I'm trying to think like i'm thinking tulips but tulips could be any color <laughs> but a much lighter purple yeah a lighter purple that that has a little bit of pink and then the color pink is what we usually call as like a whole around us of, of like a cocoon of self-love. So pink is self-love and self-worth. And so that's pretty cool too. Really? I'm yeah. writing that down. See, I have um, the, the brightest shirts that I have, which whenever I wear them, and I have several pink ones, a few bright orange ones, uh, whenever I wear them, I get compliments. <laughs> and But they're all, they've all been picked out by my youngest son. Aww. Who likes you know personality and color and all this kind of stuff and uh we'll go shopping together and i'll i'll pull stuff off the rack and i'll be like what about this and be like i don't know dad and those are always like blues and blacks and whatever i hear we'll go well, what about this one it'll be like a bright pink so i guess that says something about us too huh you know, I went to India at the end of 2018. I just made a post about it yesterday. I was just so in awe of the amount of color they all wear. Wow. I mean, there is no black, really. Everything is massive amounts of color. And sometimes like three to four layers of different color. And they're just stunning. Like the women in all their saris with different colors are stunning. And then you go by these little stores and from floor to ceiling, just just tons and tons of material, every single color. And it's just, I got excited. I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I came back to North America and here I am in the Toronto airport and it's like black. <laughs> so- Well, what about black? Before we wrap up, what about black and white? Where, Cause I, I, I hear, well, those aren't colors. Uh, I quite like them both, <laughs> but where do they, where do they fit in with all of this? Okay, so we touched a bit on the black, right? On how the black, black is like mystery. And it's also a little bit about, um, well, we mentioned about the respect. Remember I talked about the funeral homes and how we, we go yeah. to funeral homes and we wear black. So black very much is a, um, let me just shut down my emotions. It's not about me, it's about you. Again, the only concern I have is if you wear it all the time, then you're neglecting the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. So mm -hmm. in small doses, for sure. White is all colors combined. Like, you know, when you hold a prism, like a crystal in the window and you get multitude of, of color, that's that's white light. White light, when it actually filters and has the rainbow of colors, I don't know if you know this, but every color has a different frequency. So it's been scientifically proven 
that like reds vibrate low and slow and warm right up to violets, which are like cool and fast frequencies. So if we're frequencies and we're energy and color has been proven to have energy, it only almost makes sense that it just affects us. So think of white as divinity. To me, that's the highest source. I love white. I feel, I feel so protected in white. I love it. It's cleansing. It's pure. It's innocent. Um, it connects us to the divine. Where black is the mysterious world. It's the one that you don't really know. It's, it's the black hole. You don't really know what's there. You want to be careful how much you wear it and how your thoughts are. It can create more negative than positive. Because again, black is no color. White is all color. Um, but in small doses, it can make sense when you're trying to just hide a little bit because you've been over, you know, extroverted and you need some alone time. Um, so I, I try my best. I love black too, but I, even if I wear black, I always wear one element of color. And I tell people this too, if you're going to wear an all black suit for a man, put on a color tie for a woman, you know, grab that beautiful colored purse and add the scarf or put on a really nice bracelet, do something so that also, if you're going to be talking to people, you feel approachable because if someone take a look now, if someone's all in black, how much do you feel like you can approach them? How colorful are they? How much do they want to give of themselves? So I'm I'm cautious with black. I still love it, um, but I'm cautious with how much I would use it. So I'm I'm the person who has the black pants, but a, a colorful top. Or if I am in all black for whatever reason, you know, I throw on like a bright, you know, red bracelet, red earrings, red necklace, and then I feel like I've got a, a burst. We just got a, a question from Gary asking, how do I get your book? Uh, I've just put your website up on the screen here. But is that, uh, is that a suitable answer or is it wherever books are sold? Yeah. <laughs> or something other than that? <laughs> um, if you go to my website, you'll get it from Amazon. If you go to Etsy, you'll get it. Uh, if you go Live Life Colorfully uh, on the Etsy store, I'll mail it to you directly. Um, depending where you are, I personally deliver. I, you know, sold one yesterday. I dropped off because she lived nearby. Um, I'm trying to think if I had it anywhere else. <laughs> I think that's it for now. Or, you know, if you want to e-transfer me and just shoot me a, an email, we can make arrangements too and then go from there. Lots of options, huh? Lots of options. Um, I'm fascinated by all of this and I really appreciate the opportunity to, to get to know you better. And uh, I'm interested to see where things go for both of us, um, just in general, and and as we move through this very challenging time with with the coronavirus lockdown and all the uncertainty around it, um, because I really feel like um, it, it. I mean, you've seen me do different versions of the rise like a phoenix, race like a turtle thing, and isn't that interesting? Here we could go in a whole other conversation. The guy who wears black so much. Um, if you were to put colors to just the title of that talk, you'd see a lot of reds and oranges and yellows, and then you'd also see some greens and, and some earth tones in there. And that's really helped um, bring me to life, Angela, which pursuing that has helped connect me with people like you. And I feel like we've just barely, both of us, gotten started yet, that there are just more and more and more and more and more adventures and layers to explore. Can case, can you, can you see the turtle? Yes, that's so fabulous. Is that it. is that red or is that? It's like an orange, a tangerine orange. But I love it. But this is this is actually okay. I got I got a shout out to these guys. This is Pila P E L A compostable phone cases, no plastic. They're the most comfortable, awesome, and they have all these beautiful designs. This one's got the turtle, and it's all about saving the planet. But here's a great way to bring color into your life. How much are we holding our phones? Right, finding our phones, touching our phones, and it doesn't. You don't think it's going to affect you, but it does. <laughs> I give you. Um, I give you. You won't need three. You won't need two. I'll give you one guess at what color my phone case is. Oh, don't say black. Is it black? It's got a. Um, it's actually a. This is my old phone, but it's got a black case on it. Uh, my current phone. It also has a black case on it. Okay, um, but get... it, the current phone has one of those. Um, what are those? The, the things that, that help you hold on to it and whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, and it's white with a, a, a green and blue turtle. So <laughs> okay, and I've cool. got this tablet with a, okay, I, clearly I've got work to do, right? 
And my, yeah. uh, I've got like a heart like a Grinch, but it's grown 10 sizes talking to you. This is awesome. See, this is why I love talking about this because now you're going to walk away and you're going to start noticing like, oh, I need color here. I need color here. I need to do this here. And and your life's going to start shifting and changing because you're going to start like you're going to stick a sticker or something on your phone or you're going to your laptop or there's going to be something and you're going to say like, oh, my God, I need to put color there. Oh, funny. We <laughs> oh, just... questions. I love this. Thank um, you. Yeah, uh, Marina, thank you. Marina just said, may I uh, just say, uh, or say just that I wear black all the time and I'm often told I'm quite approachable. Uh, I'm just like Kevin, although I do like to use uh, pops of color. Yeah, I have, um, I, I have um, Marina, one specific pair of pants uh, that is only for when I go on stage. When, and, and, it, and they are jet black jeans. And I, I only wear them that because the more I wash these, the more the color fades out of them. But I find that when I have those, that whatever I've got on top pops more with the black jeans. Or am I just way overthinking this, Angela? No, no, you're totally right. And Marina, I just want to say, like, I'm not blanketing saying every single person who wears black is not approachable. Please, please don't think that. Um, you probably wear a beautiful lipstick or some nice jewelry or your hair's done lovely and you probably have a personality that you're very exuberant and that also helps as well um but i would i would still then test you and challenge you and say throw a piece of color in there just to see what happens well it's if you dress like batman or dracula people might give a little space right well or yeah you no know, and it's uh it's it's interesting and and how it let's see i know it's okay i'm just no thank you for your, <laughs> for your comments i love it because i don't want anyone to ever think i'm blanketing it goes so deep and and so much i have a girlfriend who's italian blonde hair she only wears black like like she will not wear an ounce of color <laughs> like at all <laughs> and if, her name is maria if you're listening maria there's lots of italian marias out there but um she'll laugh because i try so hard to get her to uh to wear some color but you know what? She did go away and she took a green dress and she wore it. And I was so proud of her. Um, it's just trying to get in your comfort box a little bit, your comfort zone and see what else is out there. So I don't think I have any green in my wardrobe like, at all. I, I don't even think I have anything with like green stripes or. Um, so that's a good indication. Yeah. And I, I hear my online community is called the Turtle Tribe. Yeah. And just looking at, I've actually in, in, in meditations recently, through some of them, I have been consciously uh, trying to sort of breathe through my heart. Oh, good for you. Um, oh, and the wrong green back there. It's got the, oh, I thought it had turtles on it. Sorry, but I got green for you. Um, <laughs> well, I need to go, I was going to say I need to go shopping like right now, but oh, I guess I'll do that um, on, well, the, on the laptop, which is black. <laughs> Until you put <laughs> like my heart. And what color is the Grinch? It's green. <laughs> Go order some Life is Good stickers. <laughs> good idea. Um, so colorful. What was I just going to say? There was something I was going to mention with that, and I can't remember. What. Oh, I remember the time when I started getting into a lot of this. I went to my closet, no green. My house, no green. I was like, what the heck's up with this no green? But I dove in, and I had some, I had some work to do. And then when I did did the self work it's i have every color in my closet now and um my house is very colorful <laughs> i love it and so are you and i just so appreciate this time angela thanks so much uh, for this I, I hope it won't be our our last conversation either on this podcast or i know it won't be just in general and i look forward to getting you back in london once we can open up the music club again and start doing some more mondays london you are welcome to join us anytime it's just a joy to um to call you a friend and, and to be able to do some of this stuff with you thanks for the time today oh my goodness i'm so honored i can't thank you enough and uh if anyone has not been to kevin's mo monday you have to go it is a tedx what did you call it tedx mix it's like tedx meets the tonight, tonight show. show with a little bit of That's muppet awesome. show tossed in yeah, and that's exactly what it is. And um, I absolutely love your Mo Mondays. And I I could chat to you all the time. It's always a pleasure. And, uh, and thank you immensely. And I hope everyone who's tuned in has learned something new about color. Yeah, absolutely. Angela, take care of yourself. Stay safe. And thanks again for the time. Thanks, everyone. Stay well. All the that's, best. Have a good day. <laughs> that's Angela Dacey from Live Life Colorfully. And this is episode number 104 of Journeys with the No Schedule Man. You will be able to find it and all 103 other episodes on my website at noschedulemanpodcast.com. Just click the podcast tab or you can go directly to noschedulemanpodcast.com 
and revisit this and the entire archive of episodes uh, whenever you like. There are all kinds of people um, who are passionate, heart-centered entrepreneurs and creative souls like Angela, who have all sorts of great stories that have been shared through the podcast. While you're on the website, jump on our email list, noschedulemancom slash email, or just click the contact pa page and you can sign up and get our free letters from the little engine into your inbox every couple of weeks or so. And a reminder that you can subscribe to Journeys with the No Schedule Man a variety of different ways. If you like to just take the audio to go, you can subscribe free on platforms like uh, Apple Podcasts or iTunes. I don't know what's the correct way to call it anymore. You can also find us on Stitcher, Google Play Music, iHeartRadio, Spotify, we are working on. We have submitted it for Spotify. I just kind of discovered Spotify during this lockdown, I'm embarrassed to say. Wow, I feel like a kid in some kind of a store. Uh, and if you like audio and the video, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com, no schedule man, or on the Facebook page, facebook.com. Uh, at No Schedule Man. Thanks again to Angela Dacey. Thanks to you for joining us. My name is Kevin Bolmer. This is Journeys with the No Schedule Man. We'll see you next time.